A role model is the quality of yaqeen, the quality of certainty. As a role model for the believers when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about her in Surah Al-Tahreem. Let us go back before the time was Maryam or Mary alayhi salam was born. Let us take a look at that pious woman named Hinna. And she asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Oh Allah, give me from yourself a good progeny. Give me good dhurriya. Give me children. She continued and she insisted and she still had hope in Allah. And therefore she names that female child Maryam. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Our speaker will be Yusuf Idris, who will be addressing us on the topic of Mary, a role model for the believers. A brief background about the speaker. Brother Yusuf Idris is a graduate from Imam Muhammad University in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia, from the faculty of Usuluddin, with a specialization in hadith and its sciences. Recently, Yusuf moved to the USA with his father, and worked in the field of da'wah for nine years. He is currently the supervisor of the College of Islamic Studies for non-Arabic speakers at Knowledge International University. Yusuf Idris is also currently affiliated with Huda TV, Saudi TV and Denja Productions and is involved in producing Islamic TV programs in more than 10 languages. So I would like to invite to the podium to address us on his topic Brother Yusuf Idris. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillahi alladhi khalaqa al-samawati wal-ard wa ja'ala al-dhulumati wal-nur thumma al-lazina kafaru birabbihim ya'dilun huwa al-lazhi khalaqakum min tinin thumma qadaa ajalan wa ajalun musamman indah thumma antum tamtaroon wa huwa allahu fi al-samawati wa fi al-ard ya'lamu sirrakum wa jahrakum wa ya'lamu ma taksibun. All praise and thanks are due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who created the heavens and the earth and originated darkness and light. Yet the disbelievers associate others in worship with Allah. It is He who created you from clay and determined a term for your death. And with Him is another term for you to be resurrected. Yet you doubt. He knows what you conceal and He knows what you reveal and He knows what you earn. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to send his peace and blessings upon his last prophet and messenger, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, upon his companions, upon his family, and upon those who follow the prophetic guidance until the day of judgment. My dear brothers and sisters, to be honest with you, I am overwhelmed with this topic of Maryam alayhi salam. And I really don't know where to start from. Because as much as you read about Maryam alayhi salam, as much as you feel that if I talk about her, I might not give her her due right. May Allah's peace and blessings be upon her. But if you could imagine a woman who was described in the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as taharaki, that Allah made you a pure person, who's described in the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as istafaki. Allah elevated you. Allah chose you over other people. If you could imagine a person who's described in the Quran as saddaqat bi kalimati rabbiha. She's a person of certainty. She truly believed in the words of her Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you could picture in front of you a person who devotes their time and their youth for the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, prostrating, bowing, and standing in long, long prayers for Allah azza wa jal. A person who's described in the Holy Quran as جَعَلْنَا بْنَ مَرْيَمَ وَأُمَّهُ آيَةً That we made the son of Mary, meaning Isa alayhi salam, and his mother a sign 
for the people. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sets her as a role model for the believers when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about her in Surah at tahrim So let us go back a little bit. Let us go back before the time was Maryam or Mary alayhi salam was born. Let us take a look at that pious woman named Hinna who was married to a pious man named Imran. And they are the descendants from a pious lineage of prophets and pious people. Allah Azza wa says in Surah Al-Imran, Surah number two, Inna Allah astafa Adam, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala elevated and Allah chose Adam alayhi salam. Wa Nuh and Noah, wa ala Ibrahim, the people or the al or the descendants of Ibrahim and Al-Imran. Upon all of humanity, so this Hinda, she was one day sitting with her servant. She was an old person. She didn't have children. And as it's narrated in some of the books of Tafsir, is that she saw a bird, a bird feeding her little baby. So she turned to Allah Azza wa And she asked Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala to also give her a baby. But she was old. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is ala kulli shay'in qadir. Allah azawajal could do whatever he wants to do with his great wisdom. And Hinna, Allah azawajal accepts her prayers. And she becomes pregnant. But her husband, Imran, may Allah be pleased with him, dies. And when she becomes pregnant, and I want you to Remember this, that she had a good intention. She had such a beautiful intention. She alayhi salam vowed, Inni nadhartu laka ma fi batni muharrara. She vowed to Allah Azza wa Jal, she made a nadhr, that whatever is in my womb is going to be only for you, O oh Allah. She's going to, or he's going to, because she thought it will be a boy. He's going to serve basically your religion. He's going to serve the people in Jerusalem in Beit al Maqdis. But then something amazing happens, something completely unexpected. She's expecting a boy who's going to be able to serve the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then Allah Azza wa Jal says, but when she gave birth to her, she said, Oh Allah, I gave birth to a female. And Allah knows what she delivered. But then look at this woman who's and herself also was a role model. She didn't give up because she was expecting Allah to give her something and Allah gave her something else. Rather, she continued and she insisted and she still had hope in Allah and therefore she names that female child, Maryam. And the name Maryam by its nature is a name of a person who loves to worship Allah Azza wa Jal, who likes to worship the Creator Subhanahu wa Ta'ala. And then she prays for that child. Oh Allah, I seek refuge with you. Oh Allah, I want you to protect her and I want you to protect her progeny from the shaitan, the cursed and rejected. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala answers her prayers. As the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tells us, that every single human being, when he's born, shaitan pokes him. Except for Maryam السلام, and her son, meaning Isa السلام. Why? Because her mother, as the Prophet says, uh, because her mother said, 
إِنِّي أُعِيذُهَا بِكَ وَذُرِّيَّتَهَا مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ I ask you to protect her and I ask you to protect her progeny from shaitan, the cursed, and rejected. And then what happens? After this beautiful baby girl, Maryam alayha salam, was born. تَقَبَّلَهَا رَبُّهَا بِقَبُولٍ حَسَنٍ That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepted her. But only that. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala changed the laws of that time where only males could serve the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he said تَقَبَّلَهَا رَبُّهَا بِقَبُولٍ حَسَنٍ It said that Allah azza wa jal revealed to Zakaria alayhi salam who was the prophet of that time that Allah accepted Maryam alayhi salam for that service. And then Allah Azza wa Jal says, وَكَفَّلَهَا زَكَرِيَّ That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put her under the kafala or the trust of Zakaria alayhi salam. We said that her mother had died alayhi salam. And her father died. She, so she became an orphan. She has no father and her mother died. So what happens? Look at how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took good care of her. It's not only that she found someone to take care of her, rather, as Allah describes it in Surah Al Imran, وَمَا كُنْتَ لَدَيْهِمْ إِذْ يُلْقُونَ أَقْلَامَهُمْ أَيُّهُمْ يَكْفُلُ مَرْيَمْ You were not with them when they were trying to draw lots or they're trying to throw their, their pens. Who's going to? They're disputing among themselves who is going to take care of Maryam. And this refers to the fact that people after the death of her mother, they started to fight who is going to take care of Maryam alayha salam. And in this there is a great lesson. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in Surah Al-Kahf about the two boys, their parents died. But Allah says, وَكَانَ أَبُوهُمَا صَالِحًا That their father was a pious person. And that is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brought Musa alayhi salam who's a prophet with Al-Khidr to help these two orphans. Why? Because of the piety of the father and because of the piety of the parent. Allah azza wa jal continued to take good care of them. And that is why Allah azza wa jal also made the people fight among themselves. Why? Because everyone wanted to take good care of Maryam to the point that they said, okay, the solution is to write our names in pens and throw them in the river. And whatever floats, whatever name stays up, that's the name of the person who's going to take care of Maryam. And guess what happens? The name of Zakaria alayhi salam comes up and Zakaria alayhi salam becomes the one who takes care of Maryam alayha salam. وَإِنِّي أُعِيذُهَا بِكَ وَذُرِّيَّتَهَا مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ فَتَقَبَّلَهَا رَبُّهَا بِقَبُولٍ حَسَنٍ وَأَنْبَتَهَا نَبَاتًا حَسَنًا وَكَفَّلَهَا زَكَرِيَّ And then the Quran tells us, كُلَّمَا دَخَلْ عَلَيْهَا زَكَرِيَّ الْمِحْرَابَ وَجَدَ عِنْدَهَا رِزْقًا That whenever Zakaria alayhi salam enters upon Maryam alayhi salam in the chamber, in the place of worship, he finds some rizq, some provision. وَجَدَ عِنْدَهَا رِزْقًا And he would wonder, يَا مَرْيَمُ أَنَّا لَكِ هَذَا O Mary, where did you get this from? And she, the pious person, the pious woman, will answer him, هُوَ مِنْ عِنْدِ اللَّهِ It is from Allah. In the books of Tafsir it says that he will come to her and he finds some kind of fruits that are only found in the winter or they're only found in the summer and he will find it with Maryam. Not in the right time, but rather in the wrong time for us as human beings. But again, this is the risk of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to a pious person. So when Zakaria alayhi salam saw this, Maryam alayhi salam became, you could say, a role model for Zakaria alayhi salam himself who was a prophet of that time in this issue. إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَرْزُقُ مَنْ يَشَاءُ بِغَيْرِ حِسَابٍ Allah truly provides for whomever He wills. And then when Zakaria alayhi salam sees this, he himself, he had a problem. 
And what was the problem? He didn't have children. So he himself turns to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah says, هُنَالِكَ دَعَى زَكَرِيَّ رَبَّهُ In that place, Zakariya alayhi salam prayed to his Lord. رَبِّ هَبْ لِي مِنْ لَدُنْكَ ذُرِّيَّةً طَيِّبًا Oh Allah, give me from yourself a good progeny. Give me good ذُرِّيَّة. Give me children. And as the angels approach Maryam alayhi salam in the mihrab, in the chamber, the angels also approach Zakariya alayhi salam in the chamber. And as Allah Azza provided for Maryam alayhi salam from places that you will never imagine, Allah also provides for Zakariya alayhi salam. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives him a child. But how old was Zakariya? Was he very old? Was he a little old? He himself describes himself and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala narrates this story in details in Surah Maryam. إِذْ نَادَى رَبَّهُ نِدَاءً خَفِيًّا Zakariya alayhi salam turns to Allah and calls him a call in secret. قَالَ رَبِّ إِنِّي وَهَنَ الْعَظْمُ مِنِّي وَاشْتَعَلَ الرَّأْسُ شَيْبًا he says, Oh Allah, my bones have become weak. And I have all of this gray hair. But, وَلَمْ أَكُمْ بِدُعَائِكَ رَبِّ شَقِيًّا But I will never be a loser, and I'm still asking you and turning to you. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provides for Zakaria alayhi salam. In another place in the Holy Quran, Allah Azza wa Jal tells us about the dua of Zakariya alayhi salam. He says, Rabbi la tadharni farda. Oh my Lord, don't leave me alone. Wa anta khayrul warifin. And you are the best of inheritors. The life of Maryam alayhi salam is full, is full of lessons for all of us. So I'm going to go back and take a look at some of the lessons for us as believers. When we look at the life of Maryam alayhi salam and how can we have her as a role model. But before I do that, let me tell you that Allah Azza wa Jal described the role models in the Quran that they will have two qualities. Allah says, وَجَعَلْنَا مِنْهُمْ أَئِمَّةً لَمَّا صَبَرُوا وَكَانُوا بِآيَاتِنَا يُقِنُونَ That we made them imams. We made them, and the word imam here doesn't mean an imam of a masjid, obviously. It means that he's a role model. He's a person that when you look at, you remember Allah Azza wa Jal, and you want to come closer to Allah Azza wa Jal. Who are these people? They have two qualities. لَمَّا صَبَرُوا When they had sabr. Patience, perseverance. وَكَانُوا بِآيَاتِنَا يُوقِنُونَ And they had certainty. If a person has this quality of sabr, and has this quality of yaqeen, he will become an imam in this deen. This is the phrase that the ulama always use. So was Maryam alayhi salam a person of patience or not? Was she? How is that? When the scholars talk about patience, they say that there is patience when it comes to obeying Allah. Patience and perseverance when it comes to obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Maryam alayhi salam, when Allah ordered her, as in Surah Ali Imran, uqnuti. And qunut means that she stands in long prayers. It was said that she stood in a long prayer until her heels started to crack. And the same thing happens to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when we read in his surah. So she was a person of patience or in perseverance when it comes to obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Usjudi, prostrate to Allah. She prostrated. Warta'i ma'ar raki'een. And bow with those who bow. And she bowed with those who bow. 
And this is one kind of patience. There is the patience and perseverance. There is the sabr of not falling into that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prohibited. You know, some of us might pray the five daily prayers and so on and so forth. But we might be doing so many kinds of sins day and night. But Maryam alayha salam had the sabr. And Allah describes one of the kinds of sabr that she had as ahsanat farjaha. She was a chaste person. Another kind of sabr which is needed. And it's well vivid in the life of Maryam alayha salam. What they call a sabr ala al Patience. When it comes to tests from Allah Azza wa Jal. And I ask you all. And I especially ask my dear sisters. What if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decreed that you become pregnant without having a husband and then after that you have to come to your people and you have to face them? What kind of a test, what kind of a heavy test would that be? Maryam alayha salam was patient with that, with the ibtila, with the tests from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Another kind of patience, sabr, when it comes to hearing bad things, insults, people trying to put you down, would you be patient with that or not? Maryam alayhi salam was patient with that also. Imagine, when she comes to her people, carrying Isa alayhi salam, they tell her, Ya ukhta Harun, oh sister of Harun, oh sister of Aaron, ma kana abukim imra'a saw, that your father was not a bad person, wa ma kanat ummuki baghiya, and your mother was not a baghi, and the word baghi is such an awful word in the Arabic language. And if I'm going to translate it, Literally, you will all shake. They're basically telling her that your mother was not a prostitute. Imagine this. You are a pure person by the word of Allah Azza wa Jal. You are Mustafa, you are elevated over other people. And then here they come, the people are telling you that your mother was not like that, your father was not like this, your brother was not like this. Then why are you pregnant? But Maryam alayhi salam also was patient. The second quality that's required for a person who wants to achieve this level of being a role model is certainty. And indeed Maryam alayhi salam had deep certainty. And Allah Azza wa emphasizes this in the Holy Quran. صَدَّقَتْ بِكَلِمَاتِ رَبِّهَا that she truly believed in the words of her Lord, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa kutubihi, and his books. So as we said that the second quality that is needed in a person who wants to be an imam, or a role model, let's say, in this religion, is the quality of yaqeen, the quality of certainty. And indeed, Maryam alayhi salam possessed this quality very well. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about her in the Holy Quran, صَدَّقَتْ بِكَلِمَاتِ رَبِّهَا That she truly believed in the words of her Lord. And that is why we also see that when the people tried to ask her about Isa alayhi salam, she did something which only a person of yaqeen and certainty will do. فَأَشَارَتْ إِلَيْهِ She pointed at him. Why? Because she's sure that he's going to talk. That he's going to talk, alayhi salam. And indeed, Isa alayhi salam talks. Another lesson that we learn from Maryam alayhi salam that makes her a role model for all of us is that whenever the person focuses, and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us all from these people, say ameen. Whenever the person focuses in the hereafter, in the akhirah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you both. Will give you the dunya and He will give you the akhirah. But if your main focus is only this dunya, 
then you might get something in this dunya. And as Allah Azza wa says, that you will have no nasib in the hereafter. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, جَعَلَ الْآخِرَةَ هَمَّةً If your real focus, if your real worry, if you're really concerned with the hereafter, جَمَعَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ شَمْلَةً That Allah Azza wa will gather your matter for you. Meaning, your mind is not going to be all scattered. You're not going to have these worries. You're not going to have these kinds of fears. وَأَتَتْهُ الدُّنْيَا وَهِيَ رَاغِمَةً And dunya will come to you, even if the dunya itself doesn't like it. The dunya will come to you. But then he alayhi salatu wasalam says, وَمَنْ جَعَلَ الدُّنْيَا هَمَّةً That if this dunya is your main concern, then Allah Azza wa will make you always see poverty in front of your eyes. And I'm sure that if you've seen some of the people who are extremely rich, extremely rich, but they don't have deen whatsoever, they are more afraid of becoming poor than a poor person. They're always thinking that they're going to lose in the stock market. And they're always thinking that what's going to happen to my factory if I lose my factory. But the most beautiful thing is when Allah Azza wa gives you this dunya and also makes you and enables you to focus on the hereafter. And we ask Allah Azza wa to make us from these people. Another point in Maryam alayhi salam's life, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted to prepare Maryam alayhi salam for the great event that's going to take place in her life. And that is the coming of Isa. So Maryam السلام, would hear the angels. The angels will talk to her. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in two places in Surah Al Imran, إِذْ قَالَتِ الْمَلَائِكَةَ When the angels said, يَا مَرْيَمْ O Mary, إِنَّ اللَّهَ اصْطَفَاكِ وَطَهَّرَكِ وَاصْطَفَاكِ And then the angels talk to her again. And that time when they talk to her again, they told her about the glad tiding of the coming of Isa alayhi salam. Another lesson that we learn from the life of Maryam alayhi salam is that even if you are a very pious person, don't think that Allah azza wa jal might not test you. Don't say to yourself that if Allah is testing me with something difficult, this is a sign that he does not love me. This is a sign that he does not like me. It's not like that. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, Ashaddun nasi bala'an al-anbiya. That the people who are going to be tested the most are the Prophets of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Thumma al-amthal fal-amthal. And then those who are closer to them, meaning in their character and so forth. Yubtala al-rajulu ala qadri deen. That you will be tested according to the level of your deen. فَإِنْ كَانَ فِي دِينِهِ صَلَابَةً زِيدَ فِي بَلَائِهِ That if your religion is strong, then the test will be more severe. Now I want you all to answer me. Was Maryam alayhi salam loved by Allah azza wa jal or not? She was, right? Yet Allah azza wa jal tested her in several places. She was born as an orphan. And after some time, her mother dies. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tests her by making her alayhi salam pregnant without having a husband. And then she delivers the baby and she's not supposed to run away, rather she's supposed to bring him back to the village. So she brings him back to the village. These are all tests from Allah azza wa jal. But because she had a high level of iman, she was able to obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And her internal happiness was enough for her. And it was a powering force that will help her and will keep her going and going further more and more in the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Another lesson, important lesson, that we learn from the life of Maryam alayhi salam. And I want especially young people to focus on this lesson and to try to learn it very well. It was said that, مَنْ تَرَكَ شَيْئًا لِلَّهِ 
عوضه الله خيرا منه. That if you leave something for the sake of Allah, Allah Azza wa will give you something better. Allah will give you something better. Now Maryam alayha salam was a young person. She was a young girl. She had obviously emotions and love. And she had energy. And she had everything that a young person and a young girl will have throughout time. And Maryam alayha salam chose to become a person who's described in the Quran in a book that will be recited until the day of judgment. Mary, the daughter of Imran, who guarded her chastity. This is a lesson, important lesson for the people, especially young people of our time. So what was her reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Her reward was that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave her a prophet as a son. A prophet who will be calling the people to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and guiding people to paradise and protecting people from the hellfire by the will of Allah azza wa So my dear brothers and sisters, especially young brothers and sisters, try to devote much of your time for the ibadah, for the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help me become the first person among all of you attendees to do this and to practice this. That we worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as we should be worshiping Him. That we devote our time for the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this was one of the lessons of the many lessons that we learn from the life of Maryam alayhi salam. We know that, especially at the time and the age that we're living in, young people especially, they have many temptations and they are exposed to different kinds of fitness that maybe did not take place 20 or 30 years ago. A young person with a click of a button he might go to a website that will bring to his mind or to her mind images that maybe will stay in her mind or his mind for years. A person might commit something haram in a blink of an eye if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not preserve them and does not protect them. And the person might have this feeling of guilt and sorrow for years. But if you say to yourself, that insha'Allah, by the will of Allah, I'm going to devote myself for the religion of Allah, just like Maryam alayha salam devoted herself for the religion of Allah, and for the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and for the love of Allah azza wa jal, Allah will give you both the happiness of this world and the happiness in the hereafter. Maryam alayha salam, after the angels started talking to her, and they gave her the glad tiding that Allah chose you over all the women of this world and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala purified you. They also told her, Inna Allah yubashiruki, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you the glad tiding. What is the glad tiding? That she's going to have a baby. And let us Reflect on the verses found in Surah Maryam. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in these verses, And remember or mention in the book, Mary. When she withdrew from her family to a place towards the east. She had some kind of a screen between herself and her people. Allah Azza wa Jal sent Jibreel alayhi salam to her. In what form? فتمثل لها بشرا سويا. 
He came to her in a form of a well-proportioned man. And as a pious person, immediately her reply was that she wanted Allah to protect her. She says, if you are a person of taqwa, if you are a God-fearing person, I seek refuge with the most merciful from you. Then Jibreel alayhi salam talks to Maryam alayhi salam and he makes her comforted by saying, He says, I am the messenger of your Lord. I want to give you a pure child. She said, how can I have a child? And I was never touched by a man. And I am not unchaste. Then Jibreel alayhi salam replies to Maryam alayhi salam. قال كذلك قال ربك هو علي هين. He reminds her that this is what your Lord said, and it is very easy for him. ولنجعله آية للناس. And we want to make him a sign for the people. ورحمة منا. And a mercy from us. وَكَانَ أَمْرًا مَقْضِيًّا And it's a matter decreed. Then Maryam alayhi salam carries that baby to a very far place. Or she goes actually to a very far place. And then the pains of childbirth start to hit Maryam alayhi salam. To the point that she cries and she wishes that she was dead. She says, I wish I was dead before this happened. But immediately, immediately the glad tiding comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Something that's very comforting. Very comforting. It's Isa alayhi salam. A baby in a crib immediately talking to her. There are two opinions of the Mufassireen, but Allahu Alam, this is the correct opinion that Isa alayhi salam is the one who talked to her. Why? Because later on she's going to point at him to talk. So he calls her and he says, He calls her from beneath her and he says, Do not become sad. There is this beautiful river beneath you. Fakuli, eat and drink and qarri aina. Fa imma tarayinna min al bashari ahadan fakuli inni nadartu lil rahman soma. And whenever you see a human being from the bashar, say that I have vowed to fast to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I'm not going to talk to anybody. Then Maryam alayhi salam comes to her people. And they say that awful statement that we mentioned earlier. And then she points at Isa alayhi salam. And they say, How can we talk to someone who's still in his crib? And this is from the beauty of the Quran. How Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions this verse that they wondered, right? How can we talk to someone who is in his crib? And the following ayah immediately, Allah azza wa jal says that فَأَشَارَتْ إِلَيْهِ قَالُوا كَيْفَ نُكَلِّمُ مَنْ كَانَ فِي الْمَهْدِ صَبِيَةِ Isa alayhi salam says, إِنِّي عَبْدُ اللَّهِ I am the servant of Allah. آتاني الكتاب. He gave me the book. وَجَعَلَنِي نَبِيًّا He made me a prophet. وَجَعَلَنِي مُبَارَكًا أَيْنَ مَا كُنْتُ And he made me blessed wherever I am. Give them a whole speech. وَأَوْصَانِي بِالصَّلَاةِ And he ordered me to do the salah. 
والزكاة ذا زكاة ما دمت حيا as long as I am alive and then look at these words that comfort Maryam عليها السلام وبرا بوالدتي ولم يجعلني جبارا شقيا that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made me dutiful to my mother. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not make me a wretched tyrant. And that is why the scholars of Islam say that if the person is not dutiful to his parents, he's not good to his parents, he's by the words of the Quran, his description is he's jabbar, he has to be a jabbar and he has to be a shaqi, he has to be a wretched person, an evil person, and he's a tyrant person. Why? Because he's arrogant to be good to his mothers. But this was not the case of Isa alayhi salam. So you see here in the story of Maryam alayhi salam, how Allah azza wa tests you with tests, but with the tests come the ease from Allah azza wa as well, and they go hand in hand. Allah says, that indeed with every difficulty comes ease. Indeed with every difficulty comes ease. And you see this vivid on all the way in the story of Maryam alayha salam. Allah says, That is Jesus. Isa, the son of Mary. That he alayhi salam is the word of truth about which they are in dispute. ما كان لله أن يتخذ من ولد. It does not behoove Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to have a son. إذا قضى أمرا فإنما يقول له كن فيكون. If he decrees something, he just says be. And it happens. Maryam alayhi salam, my dear brothers and sisters, is a role model for every single one of us. And I ask you all, my dear brothers and my dear sisters, to go to Surah Al-Imran and to read the verses that talk about Maryam alayhi salam. Read them in a place where there is no one with you and reflect on these verses and see how could you have Maryam alayhi salam as one of the role models for you. And go to Surah Maryam and read the story of Maryam alayhi salam and see the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And see how Maryam alayhi salam could be a role model for you. My dear brothers and sisters, in my opinion, one of the greatest lessons, and I'll conclude with this, one of the greatest lessons from the life of Maryam alayhi salam is a lesson regarding the importance of worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, of worshipping Allah azza wa jalla of having a good relationship with Allah Azza wa Jal, especially through prayers, through these five daily prayers and the nawafil prayers. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, in the beginning of his life, Qiyamul Layl or the night prayer was obligatory upon him and obligatory upon the believers. And there is a great wisdom in this. Allah says, Inna sanulqi alayka qawlan thaqila, that we're going to give you a heavy matter. And therefore, before that, Allah says, قُمِ اللَّيْلَ إِلَّا قَلِيلًا Stand up at night, except for a little bit. I'm not saying this because I'm a person of Qiyam al layl and a person of worship. But I'm saying this because I need this more than you do. And because I genuinely believe in this. And I think that if we do that, that if we have a strong relationship with Allah Azza wa Jal through our prayers, and if we just have the intention, like the mother of Maryam alayhi salam had the intention that my child is going to serve this religion, Allah Azza wa Jal will show us wonders in the success of our da'wah. I ask Allah Azza wa Jal to forgive us our sins. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us among those who understood his book, I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make this talk a witness for all of us on the day of judgment and not to make it a witness against us on the day of judgment. Hada wa astaghfirullah azza wa jal wa atubu ilayh. Jazakallah khaira, Brother Yusuf Idris.
for a truly beautiful talk about this great role model for the believers. We will now have, inshallah, a question and answer session. The format will be the same as before, except we do have an extra mic in the back now. So we'll start from the front and rotate in this fashion. So we will have the first question from the front mic. Sir, I want to reveal you some truth for which Allah has sent me because the topic was going about Hazrat Isa and everybody knows that Hazrat Isa a.s. is going to come back I myself want to reveal something that I myself is Imam Mahendi <laughs> and I am giving you the good news of the arrival of the Jesus Christ be peace upon him you are the Mahdi? I am uh, just don't laugh at me because I am the Allah's message I, which I have taken and Allah has told me that you to have to go and tell because this is the high time this is the high time we are not doing I, I, what I, we I, are not ordered to I Do have, have a question? question for you if you don't mind Imam yes, Mahdi is yeah. going to speak Arabic as you know أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نبدو إياك نستهيني دين سرات المستقيم. Brother, this is not enough. Every one of us, even the person who's as American as it could be, who accepted Islam yesterday, and he knows how to recite the Quran, could recite what we recited. But I'm going to tell you something. Uh, when I was in the U.S., I had a similar call, was surprisingly also from another Mahdi, but he was American. So he told me that I'm the Mahdi. So I asked him the same question. I told him, brother, do you speak Arabic? Mahdi is going to speak Arabic. He said, uh, fortunately, no. So brother, please, if you don't mind, uh, I think no, the no. question that I asked you was enough. And to be honest with you, as to just save faces, there is no need for more embarrassment. No, no, so will, if you don't I, mind, you can have I, a seat. I would like to tell you one more thing, because it's a big thing. That, uh, hello, you are not listening to me? This is question and answer time. The only reason why I let it go on uh, a little bit longer is because I wanted to see what would happen. Uh, I, I have not come here to uh, just... Uh, Please, if anyone does have a question. I will sit. We'll have the next question. I have told my thing. Otherwise, we'll go to the question from the sister at the back. Go ahead, sister. Uh, Asalaamu As Alaikum. Uh, brother, I would like to know how did the people later on accepted Maryam Salam and her son Isa Salam after accusing her of a shameful deed? How was she accepted by the people? How did she? How was she accepted by the people as they were accusing her of a shameful deed? If, you, if we reflect on the verses uh, in the Qur'an, it seems that the clearest evidence for these people was the fact that Isa salam spoke immediately as a little child. And he salam answered these questions and closed the door for any kind of allegations by this beautiful talk that even an adult will not be able to give. Also, the Prophet ﷺ tells us about another incident where something similar to this happened, where a pious man was worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and some evil people hated that, and they wanted him to be like them. So they sent a bad woman, let's say, to have sex with him. And he refused as a pious person. So as the hadith goes, that they told her to go to a shepherd and become pregnant from that shepherd. And that's what happened. And when she delivered, she said the baby is from Juraj, the worshiper. So they went there and they turned off and they destroyed the place where Juraj used to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they started to beat him. So he prayed two rak'ahs, he turned to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he said, give me the baby. They gave him the baby and he poked him in the stomach as the hadith says. And he said, Man abuk, who's your father? And the boy said, Fulanun al-Ra'i, the shepherd is my father. And then they told Juraid, we're going to build this house back for you. 
from gold. And he said, no, I want it built back again from mud as it was before. So this is another incident where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saved another person from such allegations. I hope this answers your uh, question. Jazakallah khair. The next question from the front line. This is Muhammad Sharif from Bambora, Kashmir, I'm a Sudan. My question is that Mary or Maryam, please be upon her. She is revered and respected in both religions, that is Christianity and Islam. But the followers of these two religions, they believe in her differently. Christian is differently and Muslim is differently. There are some differences. Could you please uh, tell us a few differences between Christian Mary and Muslim Maryam? Okay. As far as I know, the Bible mentions so many Marys. It's not just uh, one Mary. And the difference, one of the main differences is something that is mentioned in the Quran that they actually worship Isa alayhi salam and worship Maryam alayhi salam that they might elevate Maryam alayhi salam to as the status of being a god herself and uh, this is something that was mentioned in the uh, book of Allah azza and this is the nature many times of the groups that are described in the Quran as dhalin people who went astray that they go to extremes Right? So you find one group that accuses Maryam السلام, of horrible things, and you find another group that's elevating Maryam السلام, to the status of a god, but always you, the Muslims, are the ones, inshallah, who are in the straight path. You love her for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jal, you admire her, you respect her, but you say that she's a role model for us, she's a mother for us, we love her, but we do not worship her. Thank you. The next question from the sister. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Uh, my name is Farhana. I'm a postgraduate student. Uh, sir, I have many friends who are inspired by film stars and cricket star. When I explain them to know more of Aisha, Hajra, and Khadija Razila and make them as a role model, they said, as a being young generation, then. No need to be so boring, so please convince me to how to explain. Okay. If I understood the sister's question correctly, is that she tries to give da'wah to some of her friends, uh, especially young people, and she tries to give them maybe examples of Aisha radiallahu anha and Khadija radiallahu anha and so forth, but they tell her that this is uh, maybe so boring or something like that, they want something else. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, my dear brothers and sisters, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us about giving da'wah to other people, Allah used the word balagh mubin. That it's a balagh, right? That you are conveying something, but it's also mubin. That it is done in a beautiful, in a clear manner. And I'm going to give you an example. Imagine that we wanted to give this talk today, okay? But the microphone was completely broken, right? And the sounds that it makes in the back, you know, make you just so annoyed that you don't want to listen to any talk. And this place, if they didn't have any kind of AC or anything like that, we were sitting in the middle of the heat. And the talk, the person who's talking also didn't make any sense. You're not going to really listen very carefully, right? But all of these preparations that you see around you are part of making the balagh mubin, making it clear and better for people to understand. To use everything that is possible to make it understood. For example, my sister, I know that inshallah ta'ala you're trying hard to, to convince your, uh, your colleagues and so on and so forth and trying to tell them about the sahabiyat of the Prophet uh, or, or the wives of the Prophet Muhammad uh, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and so on and so forth. But sometimes, for example, the book that we might use might have so many grammatical errors. And this becomes the turn off for many people. Okay? Maybe it's not printed in the best of ways. Maybe it's not written in a format that is similar to the format that they are used to. Maybe they are used to beautiful books that are in, uh, for example, uh, written in literature. So you have to be very careful in the kinds of books that we give them, in the kinds of talks that we give them, and so on and so forth. And if we do that, by the will of Allah Azza wa we're going to be fulfilling the condition of having it as a balagh, as, you know, conveying of the message, and it will be mubin, it will be something that is clear. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give you great success in your da'wah and to always uh, help you become a role model uh, yourself for 
the sisters around you. The next question from the front mic. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My name is Rauf Sheikh and I am a student. Thank you, Jazakallah Sheikh, that your moral lecture for being a good moral for us and non Muslim also. My question is that can we prove scientifically or medical science in front of the non Muslims that uh, Maryam alayhi salatu wasalam delivered Jesus alayhi salam without touching any male? Because we have to convey the message to non-Muslims, that's why we have to prove the scientific proof and medical proof. Can we prove this? Isa alayhi salam, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes him, his birth is a murk. It's an ayah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And everything when it's described as something like an ayah or mu'jizah, it has to be something that is out of the norm. It is not something that is normal. And I'm going to give you an example. The book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Quran. What does it consist of? It consists of letters, right? Are they English letters? No, they are Arabic letters. But in spite of that, the people of the time of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who were the most eloquent in the Arabic language, right? They were not able to produce one ayah of the Quran. Why? Because it is a because it is a miracle. And likewise, the birth of Isa alayhi salam. His mother became pregnant with him. But in some of the books of the tafsir, it says that it didn't obviously take that long, nine months or something like that. Some of the books of tafsir say it was almost something like an hour or so. And she gave birth to him. Why? Because it is a miracle. The other issue that you could bring up with them, what is the other option? What is the other option other than it was a miracle from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Thank you. We'll have the next question from the sisters. Asalaamu Alaikum. My name is Alia Khan and I'm doing my majors in psychology. Uh, Sheikh Jazakallah for your enlightening and well researched uh, talk. And uh, we hope that many viewers would benefit from this. My question is uh, many modern day Christians do not believe in the virgin birth of uh, Jesus. Alayhi salam. So how to best explain to them that this is a fact and not just a myth? One tip that I can give you, and I learned it from my father, Jazallah Khair. He told me that the Quran always focuses on one issue. One issue when it comes to Isa alayhi salam. And it answers this question very clear. Many times when we try to perhaps give da'wah to Christians, and I'm not the best person to talk about this. Perhaps Yusuf Estes will make you laugh and he will answer your question as well. One of the most important elements that the Quran always brings up over and over and over are the proofs that Isa alayhi salam is not a God. The Quran only, as far as I know, focuses on this issue. So if you take a look, at the Quranic verses, which have very, very logical arguments about this issue, inshallah ta'ala it will be sufficient. Sometimes we might try to give da'wah to non-Muslims through other things, for example, telling them about human rights in Islam and telling them, for example, about the woman's status and so on and so forth. Truly, if the person has shubuhat or doubtful matters or so, things that they didn't understand in these issues, inshallah it will help. But when it comes to the main thing which the Quran focuses on is this issue of having Isa alayhi salam as a human being and not as a creator. And it answers this question in a very beautiful and uh, logical way. For example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala indirectly asks the question whether Isa alayhi salam is a son of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or is he a creation of the creation of Allah? Why? Because if you say that he is from the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then obviously you do not create your child, right? Like Maryam alayhi salam, did she create Isa alayhi salam? No, you give birth to your child. You see what I'm trying to say? So my point is that try to go back to these verses 
reflect upon them, especially when it comes to the issue of Tawheed, and inshallah they will be sufficient. And also ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide their hearts. This is one of the most important things to keep in mind as well. The next question from the front mic. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. My name is Abdul Salam. I am a student of Diploma Engineer. As we know that the daughter of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is known as Fatma Razi Allah Ano. So my question is that why the mother of Isa alayhi salam is called Maryam alayhi salam in the Quran? Say that again. I'm sorry. I didn't understand the question. As we know that the daughter of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is known as Fatma Razi Allah Ano. So my question is that why the mother of Isa alayhi salam is called Maryam alayhi salam in the Quran? As far as I know, there isn't a place in the Holy Quran that refers to Maryam alayhi salam as alayhi salam. But it's a word of dua and word that shows respect for her alayhi salatu was salam over other women. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Holy Quran, Inna Allah astafaki about Maryam. وطهرك واصطفاك على نساء العالمين that Allah Azza wa Jal chose her, gave her this istifa, elevated her status وطهرك, he purified her and he made her status over the all women of this world على نساء العالمين that she's above the women of all the worlds basically the world of the jinn and the world of the inn so it's a word of respect, a kind of dua that we make for her alayhi salam or alayhi salatu wassalam. When it comes to the daughters of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, when it comes to the wives of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, when it comes to the sahaba of the Prophet alayhi salatu wassalam in general, we say radiyallahu anhum, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be pleased with them. As it is in the Holy Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about the sahaba uh, that Allah azza is pleased with them. لَقَدْ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ That Allah was pleased with them. So when we mention their names, we say, May Allah Azza wa Jal be pleased with them. May Allah Azza wa Jal have ridwan uh, upon them. But it's just a form of dua as you all know. Jazakallah khair. The next question from the sister's mic. Assalamu alaikum. I'm Misha. And my question is, could you tell us the one special quality about Maryam alayhi salam which made her a woman above all the women of the world? To be honest with you, sister, I think that there are so many qualities, so many qualities. And I can't really mention one of them, to be honest with you. When I was trying just with my own reflections to reflect on the life of Maryam alayhi salam, and in how many areas she could be a role model for us, I came up with maybe a list of 13 uh, issues or so. But maybe if I tell you about some of the main descriptions that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes Maryam with alayhi salam, maybe this will uh, help us all. For example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that she's pure. Okay? Allah azza wa made her pure. That she's ahsan at farjaha. That she's, she was a chaste person. Saddaqat bi kalimati rabbiha. That she truly believed in the words of her Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala. Kanat min al that she was among those who stood in qunut, in long prayers. She fulfilled the command of Allah Azza wa in making sujood. She fulfilled the command of Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala in making ruku' in bowing to Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala. As we said and mentioned earlier, she fulfilled all the conditions of patience. She wasn't only patient with the decrees of Allah Azza wa Jal or patient only with people's allegations and accusations. She was not only patient in not falling in the disobedience of Allah Azza wa Jal, also in obeying Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala. So there are so many areas. And again, my request, go read the life of Maryam alayhi salam, especially in the Holy Quran. And the more you read, the more areas of how a role model for you and for all of us would be Inshallah Ta'ala will be present to you. Jazakallah. Jazakallah khaira, Brother Yusuf Ibrahim.